Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am Brigadier Sushil Basin, a time consciousness coach, TEDx and global speaker, trainer, and an author. I'm here today on the Time Brigade, and we are talking about goal management. Now, right from about the 18th of uh, January, we have been talking about goals every day at 5 p.m. And on the 20th Jan, I had spoken about self-discipline, which I think is the mother, the mother key of all goal management. And uh, for some bad luck, the, there has been some issue technology wise that after about three, four minutes, there was no sound, which we realized. And so I found a little gap in my series. And today I'm going to be repeating what I did on the 20th of Jan. And I'm going to be talking today about self-discipline. Now, where does it come from? Let me tell you that if you are to look at about 100 time management and goal setting tips that will make you achieve your goals, achieve success and happiness, then there is one mother tip and that is self-discipline because without this, none of the other 99 tips can work. It is not about learning the tools and technology. It's not about using apps. It is not about knowing the process, but there are three distinct things and let me explain that to you. One is the first step. No, I'll start from here. First step, knowing what you want. I, I'm very fond of using this little sentence which I picked up from one of the speakers that I don't remember his name. He said, why don't people get what they want? And the answer is they don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. It's very essential that I must ask myself, what do I really want? What do I really want? What is that something that's going to give me my pleasure of life? So once I've got that clear, then I must have my goals clear. What do I want and, and what is the ultimate thing I want to reach? To want this, what do I need to do? And there's a process in between. And this process is something that you have to learn. It includes tools and technologies, but most importantly, it comes right in the beginning to ask your why. Why do I want to do it? Why do I want to do it? it you know, unless you get that compulsive desire to do something, to achieve something, which you think is going to give you the ultimate pleasure of life. That is what you have to identify. And then it is all about becoming that person, upgrading yourself, going into your inner life. And I've talked about it in another video about inside out, that your inside world will decide how good your outside world will be. Your internal decides your external. And therefore, today I'm going to be focusing on what do you need to do to strengthen this inner self so that you can come out with remarkable results, right? So let's get cracking on this idea of what are, what are the, uh, what is self-discipline and how do I get about reaching there, right? So the first thing is I want to cover the, de the definition of self-discipline. What is self-discipline? And if you have a paper pencil, write it down. And I think I'm going to put it in the description as well. Self-discipline is doing what you ought to do. Doing what you ought to do when you don't feel like doing it and when nobody is watching you. I'll say that again because I think it's a very, very important thing. Firstly, doing what you ought to know. Now, what is it that you ought to know or ought to do? Sorry, what is it that you ought to do? I know it right from my childhood. I know what to do. I know what is right and wrong. My parents told me that. My teachers told me. I know what I ought to do. I know I ought to look after my health. I know I ought to follow my timelines. I know I must get good results, whatever, whatever you want to do. If you think you have to go to the gym, but that's what you ought to do. You don't feel like doing it, but you still do it. That is where self-discipline comes in. And self-discipline is also about your external self 
telling your internal self. Now, please understand this. There is somebody outside you who controls your inner voice. And when the inner voice says, let me sleep for a little while more. And then you have another voice saying, no, no, but you need to go to the gym. Now, which one of these succeeds? Is your yes stronger than your no will decide how well you achieve your goals. And if you don't achieve your goals, don't blame the goals. Don't blame the process. Blame the driver of the car. And that's you. That you are unable to bring that compulsive yes in your mind that I have to do it. Right? So when you put on, you set an alarm at night for 6 o'clock. And then when it rings at 6 o'clock, you, you know, today you have, of course, the mobile phone. So you'll snooze it. And earlier you had an alarm clock where you uh, you had a knob on the top and just bang it and they shut up. And you sleep for another half an hour. It is not that you lost that half an hour, which is also important, but it's not as important as what you have done. You have given yourself permission to disobey yourself. That is very important. So let's see if we can stop doing that. Stop giving yourself permission to do something that you yourself decided to do. You decided to get up at 6. You could have decided to get up at 6.30 right in the beginning. Nobody stopped you. So when we understand what it is, let us understand, now go beyond and say, how do I imbibe this self-discipline? How do I imbibe it? What makes it happen? What makes it not happen? Okay. So if you want to self-control yourself, you want to self-discipline yourself, then you have to learn five things. Five things. The first one is your balance. Are you balanced between all the things of your life, whether it's your personal, your professional, your health, your finance, everything? Are you balanced in your goals? Second is, do you panic or are you calm? So let's be calm. The third is determination. Am I determined? How determined am I to achieve what I want to achieve? What is my confidence level? What is my confidence? And what is the willpower and the, you know, the willpower and the inner desire to do something? So if these five things are balance, calmness, determination, confidence and willpower are in place, you'll be able to easily get to your self-discipline. There's one more definition which I'll talk about, which I've taken from the first one I did myself, I coined it myself, but this is the second one which I've taken from the dictionary, which says that self-discipline can be defined as an orderly function of controlling one's feelings. Orderly function of controlling one's feelings and dealing with all odds, maturely ensuring complete positivity and total control. So once we understand these definitions and we know what we are talking about, let's say, how do you overcome the lack of self-discipline? And again, I'm going to give you a couple of points and they need to be written down if you want to. It will be good for you. Right. First is take small steps. Small steps. Because what happens is sometimes we decide to do too many things. They don't happen and you give up. So, Baby steps. At least let me start with one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Let's not gobble too much. Let's not put too much in our plate. Let's not bite more than what we can chew. So take small steps. The second is be very clear about your inner motivation. And the inner motivation comes from consistently asking yourself and reinforcing your why. If your why is there, you're getting that visualization of what you want to achieve. You'll get there. Then is create the right environment. Right environment. Okay. That means, are you in the right place? Are you with the right people? Are you equipped with the right things to be able to achieve that goal that you want to? Okay. Then know the right way of self-discipline, which means read a lot about it. Understand. I, I listen to a lot of, watch a lot of videos by people like Simon Sinek and... Um, Sadhguru, Gaur Gopal Das, uh, Shivani sister, they give you a lot of these ideas which bring into your self-conscious mind and understand 
the rudiments and foundations of what self-discipline is. Right? Now, get into sports and arts. That is another tip I'll give you. See, when you are a sportsman or an artist, you give your mind a lot of creativity. And because when you get into something like this, it helps you reinforce your, your self-discipline. Learn to say no. Learn to say no to yourself and learn to say no to others when it is hindering with the plan that you have made. Right? Make it fun. Because we have come to this planet to have fun and make your work fun. Make achievement of your goal fun. Don't make a goal which is painful for you. Right? Repetition is the key. You have to keep repeating, repeating, repeating what you are doing over and over again so that it becomes a habit. I always say that your comfort zone is somewhere where you like to be. Every human being was born lazy and he loves to be there. But if you find a way of coming out of that comfort zone and how does that happen? There has to be a force that pulls you out from that comfort zone. And what is that force? That force is called passion. That force is called zeal and enthusiasm. So find the way you can be passionately involved in your goal and will it will not let you sleep. It will wake you up early in the morning because you have some excitement to do that particular part of the activity which will make you go one step closer to your goal. Then visualize the benefits. I talked of it earlier. Visualize. So, you know, so supposing you made a goal of your looking fit, for example, and you have a poster of somebody who you want to look like him or her and if that is what your aspiration is, put your own picture with you know, which shows you how you would like to see yourself. Visualize, because the brain thinks pictures. The brain doesn't think words, and therefore visualize. Right? Be ready to pay the price for the benefits. You must know that if I achieve that goal, what are my benefits going to be? And if I know my benefit benefits, you know you'll have to pay a price for it. And the price could be in terms of the time you'll have to invest in, in terms of doing things that you don't like to do. But you know that that is required. Rehearsals, uh, practice, all those things are a price that you pay for the results that you achieve. For example, when I went for my TEDx talk, and I normally don't prepare for my talks, I just uh, talk more or less impromptu. Or I, I practice, I, I do give a lot of time to my material. And then I just write it on a few uh, tips on a piece of paper and that also I don't refer to but then I don't um, I don't read it out or I don't uh, depend on that so I find practices quite boring but I do a lot of visualization and mull over the whole thing as to what I'm going to do on the stage or on the online platform proximity is power this is what I learned from Sam Cawthon proximity is power you are an average of five to seven people you hang around with. Okay, so be in the proximity of people who are good to influence in your life. And there's a beautiful uh, way of doing it. It is 30, 30, 30. You should have 30% people in your proximity who are better than you, whom you can look up to and take inspiration from. 30% people in your proximity should be your peers. 30% should be the people you can coach because they are wanting to reach where you already reached. So follow the system, have a good proximity to uh, good people. And the last thing is develop an ambition mindset. Develop a, a janoon, a jazba to be there. I want to be there, right? If we do this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there is no way there's no way that you will not be able to achieve your goals. So thank you very much. I see some people who have come online and they are there right now. Can you just say hi to me on the chat box so that I know who is it? Just give me your names. I'll be very happy to know who is live right now with me. Okay. Now let me go a step further and talk of one or two more things that come to my come my way. And that is... How do you change your life? So you develop your self-control, which I talked of. Develop your willpower. 
and then become mentally tough. Mentally tough. Okay. To, so when you have mental toughness, your ability to achieve your goals becomes far, far more. So that's all what I had today for you. And uh, I would be very happy to know uh, if you have any comments, any questions. Uh, I would love to know that. Yeah, anyone, anyone, any questions, any, any answers? Bring me, who, uh, being me, who's being me? Can you write your name, please? Anil Goswami, thank you very much for being there always. But being me, uh, I'll be very happy to know your name. If you can uh, disclose that, unless it's a secret. I have seven people now, more people have joined in. So guys, who, those who are not here right now, let me tell you that I have been doing for the last about 15 days now, every day at 5 p.m. I'm talking about goal setting and I'm particularly uh, concerned about this subject because I feel that 2020 and 2021 are twin years which have presented to us a unique challenge which never was there earlier. 2020 came to us with lots of surprises, with lots of challenges, and each one of us has faced challenges. Whether those challenges were professional or personal, emotional, uh, financial, a uh, whole lot of challenges were there, and we have gone through them. But what has 2020 done? 2020 has been able to bring about a certain amount of toughness in us, resilience, so we have become more resilient, we have become more tough, and we are now able to handle 2021 better. But ladies and gentlemen, the problem is that 2021 comes to us with a lot of hopes and aspirations. Market is opening up, things are coming back to normalcy. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. But there is still a lot of uncertainty hanging around there. Uncertainty is hanging around. And if that uncertainty is hanging around, I want to know, what are we doing about that? Are we preparing ourselves for 2021? And this is what I'm on a journey to help people with my experience of goal setting for the last about eight years. And I have learned this from my guru, Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy has endorsed my book and see what he says. He says Sushil has developed a beautiful, sorry, I love to read it out. A wonderful system of goal setting and time management that will transform your life and double your income. Now, that is what Brian Tracy said. And I hope you know who Brian Tracy is. And this is a book I have written, which he has endorsed. So I'm on a journey to transform people. I'm on a journey to create. I'm on a journey to create a society which is conscious of time, conscious of respecting each other's time and bringing in some wonderful environment around us. How many of you would support me right in the chat box if you will like to support me in becoming time conscious and also spreading the time consciousness in our environment? Right. So that is what I've been talking about. Uh, so let me just go through the comments. I see being me saying good evening, sir. Practice makes us perfect is the saying. Uh, how can we succeed only on the base of visualization? Certainly not. Certainly visualization is not the only thing. And bring me, I really, really would love to uh, get your name. Uh, unless you are really, really wanting to keep it a secret. But that's up to you. See, what I'm saying is visualization makes me have easier to work. I said that practice, practice, practice. There's no two ways about it. Practice you have to do. But... Let me tell you the flip side and bring me, this is for you. I was once playing golf and uh, I was standing at the practice tee and I was hitting balls and somebody said, you must at least hit 100 balls a day. So I had somebody in front of me, my caddy, and he was picking up the balls and I was only doing one thing. I was only counting the number of balls that went reasonably well. There was a, this coach who's standing in front of me and he kept, uh, kept um, what do you call, uh, watching me for a while. And then he said, can I say something? I said, please go ahead. 
He says you are making such a major mistake, and you are making it again and again. You are practicing the mistake. This it will be very difficult for you to come out of it. So, if you don't have a coach, you don't have somebody to navigate. You don't have somebody to tell you where you are going wrong. Then a practice, and if you keep practicing a wrong thing, please be mindful that that wrong thing will become your wrong habit. So, let's be very very watchful on that. So, uh, guys, what I recommend to you is please go back right from the first day and go through my every days. Every day, I've done about ten to fifteen minutes video, and have a look at these uh, series of goal setting uh, videos. I'm sure you'll find them use useful. Give me a feedback. Let me know more what more I can do for you, and I'll be very very happy. So I see the enterprise of India. Oh, very good. Thank you, Ruth. Very, very happy to see you, Ruth, coming back here after a long time. I haven't seen you, Ram Kumar Sharma. I am not sure whether I've ever met you, but nice to know. And at least you have given your name there. Makes me feel, you know, connected personally to somebody. So thank you very much. And Anil Goswami says, 2020 helped to learn many lessons in VUCA situations. Yeah, and actually, I say it's now VUCA D3 world because VUCA was in the late 90s. Lots of things have happened in the last 30 years or 20 years uh, that have changed the world, and that is what what has happened is the three Ds that have got added to VUCA are diverse, uh, digital, and just a minute, what is it? Uh, they are, yeah, diverse, uh, digital, and one more. Oh, I'm forgetting the other three T. Sorry, sorry, just slipped up on my mind. But there's it's on there on all my videos and all the three Ds that you you like to be careful about. <clears throat> Thank you, being me, and um, I'm very happy that you understood. And if there's anything more that you want to know, keep asking questions. I'm available. Let me give you a link here, uh, which will you know you can watch me. You can watch things here, all over. Uh, so this is one link, which has all my links, <clears throat> and this will give you. <coughs> and I'm talking about the free content, but if you really want to get down to goals and you want to get into a practice of doing goals, very very. Uh, systematically, very very systematically. If you want to do any of my goal setting programs, then you need to join my goal setting workshop, which will happen next Thursday, sixth of February. Sorry, next Saturday, sixth of February, four thirty to seven thirty, right? And if you wish to do that, here is a link in the chat box, and you can join this, right? You can join this, and you will. Be able to okay. So here is a link in the chat box. It will also be there in the description, which will enable you to come and join my three hours master class. You'll have to invest ninety minutes of your time and a very little money, um, maybe the <clears throat> close to the cost of a pizza. And you will be able to get your 2021 goals very rightly, and you will get 100x value from that money that you will spend on Saturday, 6th February. Thank you very much, and I'll call it a day. Diverse, digital, disruptive. Thank you very much, Bharti. You really come handy. Yeah. So the three Ds I was talking. I just forgot the diverse. Yeah. So the world has become very diverse. Digital and disruptive, so that has made the VUCA world a little more challenging. So Anil, I hope you got that. Yeah, thank you. Right. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And today I think it's gone beyond twenty minutes, which does normally doesn't happen. But let me end it here. Tomorrow evening, five p.m. back again here. Even though it's Sunday, but we works seven days a week. Every day I'm there, unless there is some challenging program at the same time, which happened yesterday. Otherwise, I'm there every day at 5 p.m. So see you tomorrow, 5 p.m. 
tell your friends, let's have more people coming here. Today I found a lot of energy because of seven, eight people coming there together. And this is the first time we saw so many comments. So thank you very much.